Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with a bit of drama and some dev responses. The death zone of Port Alassar, RCIG coming back to their offices, ships looking worse after an update, and the Mercury Star Runner's doors and pressure. While browsing the Star Citizen Reddit, I saw a thread, Port Alassar 3.13, CIG question mark, hello is anyone there? Some players are calling Port Alassar a death zone. Campamus Prime or PvP Hell or Griefzilla. I made a couple of those up admittedly, but basically the green zone for firing your pew pews has gone from Port Olisar in the 3.13.0 PTU patch or the current PTU. And uh, that has caused an area that was heavily camped by PvPers to be even more so and not be protected so much. So Port Olisar doesn't have the same coverage for turrets and security as it's a smaller, unique legacy station. But there is a huge amount of volume, or at least there was a huge amount of volume, of players passing through it. So you have a load of players there that are, you know, trying to do docking services, typically lawful players. And then they're surrounded by um, these uh, PvPers and less than lawful players um, sort of floating around and sort of interacting there. And by interacting, I mean shooting people and blowing people up, whether that be on the landing pads, whether that be flying around. Obviously, different PvPers are different. Some people are very much sort of destroy you on the pads, lol, lol, lol. Other people are sort of waiting there for any form of fight. Um, some people will just let mining ships and stuff go because it's not really a fight if you're just um, attacking them. Um, but some people are just uh, w wanting to destroy everything. The original poster said, It's like we're taking steps backwards instead of forwards. The turrets obviously can't defend the station and everyone knows it. Maybe that'll be solved before it hits live, if it hits live at all. But that doesn't solve the core issue that PvPers have no content. Give the PvP community some content, even just a crumb, so they aren't left with camping Port Olisar and alienating themselves from the rest of the Star Citizen community. Can anyone seriously say they wanted this feature in the next patch? Guys, CIG, you're tearing the community apart, and maybe that's an exaggeration, but every night I log into the Persistent Universe, I see four to five people going at it in global chat with someone camping Port Olisar. Some of the people who get randomly ganked, pulling into the station log off and don't get back on. I know you say you're listening, but it really seems like you're not taking the community feedback seriously. So. I think a lot of PvPers just want some tangible gameplay and a bit of a focus. Uh, a lot more of the PvE orientated folks don't want to be randomly attacked and killed while they're flying around in a prospector or for no reason, and they want game systems there to deal with it. I think that's true of everyone. People want game systems in the game to support all that gameplay and to protect and focus and sort of like have restrictions on certain things but um, some of those restrictions can be you know harsh penalties and laws um, but also gameplay that focuses on a particular way of playing rather than just going no you can't do that no 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 pvp for you or anything like that some people are just taking advantage of the green zone removal to watch the world burn for sure the thing with port Olisar, though is that it's not adequately defended to deal with people camping it even high paying missions to deal with criminals in that area could do a lot to deal with that because you'd have a lot more players actively uh, wanting to defend the station. We know that PvP and PvE gameplay needs to be supported and that we don't want anarchy, so hopefully Cloud Imperium will give us an update and roadmap plans of when we can expect to see some deeper gameplay, some deeper laws, some deeper PvP type stuff. Now, it's very possible that they've got this rolled into the Bounty Hunter updates that they've got planned and things like that, but Cloud Imperium need to address that in more of a, look, this is the sort of roadmap to where we see PvP and PvE crossing over and being a tangible experience and people not having to worry so much about their prospect of being camped at Port Olisar. But some players seem to think that the change of relaxing the green zone is getting ready for the next major Xeno threat like event, the Nine Tails Lockdown, which is possible. At some point we're going to be able to draw our FPS weapons in locations properly too. When that happens, if they're not adequate game systems in place, that's really going to be anarchy. Right, moving on. Jared, Disco Lando, made a comment recently that CIG was slowly coming back to their offices and there was a thread for this. This makes me so happy to see Disco and others back in the offices. Keep up the good work, CIG. Disco responded in some more detail. I'm back in the office part-time because I am vaccinated and chose to be. I was tired of having a television studio in the middle of my living room and the area where I shoot is still quite sequestered from the rest of the office. The overwhelming majority of my work is still being done from home. I would caution 
against taking this to mean anything more than what I said in the show. The very beginning of a slow, deliberate process of life returning to normal. I imagine many of us have many more days of working from home ahead of us, including me, all but a small handful of hours a week. Still, it's really nice to be back, even if only for a couple of hours a week. I am very much looking forward to Cloud Imperium being back to their offices full time because and that means I can go on office tours, uh, but also probably means that the video content will um, sort of um, expand again a little bit. Maybe we'll start to see more from Chris Roberts and uh, the Pillar Talk and stuff. I think that one of the reasons we haven't seen uh, Pillar Talk and Chris so much is because probably doesn't want to do it for, uh, from a webcam from home. We had a thread, the Gladius isn't the only thing getting love in 3.13, pointing out that the MPUV looks like it had a few model and paint changes. It's now a brighter orange and looks to me like it's lost some of its detail, though some people may disagree. I think it looks a lot more like a toy than before. I'm not sure I like the changes personally. It certainly has mixed responses from the community. Tell me what you think. We had a Mercury Star Runner interior thread. Any idea when the lock functionality of the Mercury Star Runner doors will come back? The ability to lock and open the Mercury Star Runner doors would be a big thing for me to play with my Mercury Star Runner more. So, uh, a lot of that functionality has come back now. It's already working in the PTU again. But there was a follow up question of note. I'd like them to automatically close when the room is being pressurized to protect the rest of the ship or when the room is full of fire or a poisonous external atmosphere from a hostile environment, planet or moon, is pouring in through the opening. This would resemble how bulkhead doors behave in ocean-going vessels. They can even close without main power being on. CIG's Calix Renu responded, This is indeed the plan, and the logic to support this has already been implemented and should be ready to plug into the sensor entities that actually detect changes in pressure or toxic gases when they come online. I think it was a feature in an older Inside Star Citizen video, but the intended behavior is that the connected doors will close automatically and will disable the proximity sensors until pressure is restored or the gasket behavior is disabled. You'll still be able to manually open and close doors unless otherwise enforced by a proper airlock system, but you won't have to worry about accidentally venting the ship just by walking by anymore. Boom! That's it for some Star Citizen drama and dev responses today. If you have any hot topics or threads you want us to check out, then please drop me a comment along with if you have any opinions on 3.13 and Paul Olisar. Have you been there? Have you been locked down by PvPers there? Are you a PvP yourself? Have you only heard of PvP in Tales? Do you not see any point in that sort of gameplay at the moment? What do you think of the MPUV if you've seen it in 3.13? When do you think 3.13 will go live? Obviously we're waiting for it at the time of recording to go to wave 2 PTU and open PTU and still in wave 1 but whatever your thoughts I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Actually I'll leave you with the best Star Citizen pun I saw on Reddit today. Want to know the real difference between The Rock and The Rock DS? Minor changes. It's minor like, M I M you know, like mining rock. Please send your groans of disapproval to Longtree. They are the genius of that pun. Do you have questionable taste in anime? Do you not want internet pirates looting your internet search history? Do you want a way to have more accessibility to the internets from more countries? Or is your security and privacy important to you? Well, get NordVPN. I shill for them and you should use the code BOARDGAMER or the links below for a discount. Try it out. It's like a fleet of escort ships making sure your internet experience doesn't get griefed. We have the April ship giveaway as well for a Mercury Star Runner. The ship is extremely multi-role and should be part of any budding citizens fleet. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning one is comment on any of my videos made during the month. A random commenter will take that prize. These giveaways and the wider channel content are made possible by people that go the extra mile by becoming a Patreon or a YouTube channel member with that join button in the links below. And me and Zin, the editor for the channel, are now trying to put out regular exclusive content as a thank you. We'll also be asking you in those videos to help shape the channel with uh, making decisions about what content we do and how we do it. Please consider joining if you're really enjoying the content. It really does help. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Star Citizen content, and I'll see you in the verse.